Hey guys, Nathan here. I brought the 2019 GMC Sierra 1500 AT4. It is the best off-road vehicle that's a half-ton truck offered by General Motors. Yeah, Nathan, that's nice, but I brought the best half-ton off-road truck from Ram. It's the brand new Ram Rebel, but not just any truck. This is our long-term Ram Rebel Rouser project truck. And how about we take both of them on a difficult ironclads trail? Here it is, the Ironclads Trail, and today we're comparing these two trucks on three stages. We have approach, departure, and breakover angle test. We have an articulation test, and of course we have the traction test. These two trucks are actually quite different. We have different tires, different ground clearance, and different off-road gear. Let's see how it works. You guys know me. I don't like to go gentle that often. So when I'm this traction, I just shut my foot to the floor and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit more. No, it's actually not. Actually, uh, that's what I do. So we started with a crew cab truck, 4x4 with steel suspension, and that's an important part because. Steel suspension is easier to modify and we knew we wanted to do a leveling kit. And as a stock truck, this Rebel didn't have enough approach angle and breakover angle in the middle. So by giving it a two inch lift in the front and giving it a taller tire, I gained about three and a half inches of clearance in the front, about one inch of clearance in the rear, which improved my angles all the way around. And I just crawled over there Without a slip, the rear locker is engaged, it's doing its job. Mwah. Off roading is usually not about how much power and torque you have, it's about your four wheel drive system and the gearing. But under the hood of the Ram is a 5.7 liter Hemi, and it has a couple mods this aftermarket high performance Ram airflow intake, and of course, a cat back exhaust system making this truck a little bit more powerful and also sound amazing which is important for an off-road truck i'm calling baloney on andre because with heavy trucks like these and they're not light Power and especially torque are very important. And check this out. This has one of the best engines, in my opinion, in the class, the 6.2 liter V8. It puts out 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Yes, and it's hooked up to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Now, this engine is special because it has General Motors upgraded intake and exhaust system. As such, slightly more power. And most importantly, Andre! How's that e-torque engine of yours? How much power does it actually put out? Yeah, Nathan, you got a lot of torques. And the stock rating on the 5.7 Hemi is 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. Yes, indeed, quite a bit less than in the GMC. But I have a couple more things working for me. The e-torque system helps you get going at torque at the very start and also smooths out shifts. And in four low, this eight-speed automatic is really smooth. Yeah, dude, that's kind of cute. It sounds good, but it's nowhere close to the Rebel Rouser. You want to hear something funny? What? When I was on the highway behind you and you were accelerating, I thought there was something wrong with this truck because yours was so loud. You can wake up the neighbors, yeah. <laughs> All right, stage one was a test of approach and departure angles. This is articulation. Now 
sometimes, and it's one of the problems with this axle, rear axle, is that you have to spin it in order for it to lock up. And I'd really rather it work like the um, Ram, where you flip the switch and it is locked. So you see that truck was really trying, and the rear locker actually did its thing. One tire was spinning, like right there. One tire is losing traction, the other one is catching up and doing its thing. It's a funny thing when you buy a vehicle right from the factory and they give you almost everything you need to dominate off-road. Jeep does this, Ford does as we think about the Raptor, but General Motors does it as well. And they manage to do it with a very smart package. Now it all starts with the Rancho suspension. That's an upgrade, plus a two inch lift, obviously upgrade. And so are these tires. Now these are 275-65R18s. I would like larger tires, but these Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax I'm really warming up to. They're fantastic for traction and they work really well on the streets. All in all, the entire package gives this vehicle, along with its really powerful engine, true capability off-road. We call our long-term Ram Rebel the Rebel Rouser. And thanks to many partners, this is now one special truck. And of course, I'm talking about Mopar accessories like this heavy-duty off-road steel wheel, which is beadlock capable, even though I'm not using beadlocks today. I have Toyo Open Country 82 tires, which are now 35 inches tall. And this is possible due to a two-inch leveling kit from Falcon Shocks. Basically, this truck is now taller by about three inches, has better approach angle, better departure, and quite a bit better breakover angle. I do not want to damage the truck on the right. And on the left, there's a bit of a tree. So I need to be very gentle, very careful how I negotiate this. And actually, Wow, I could use precision. Not a lot of throttle. It seems like really a good articulation thanks to the Falcon shocks. And uh, I'm able to just feather the throttle just a little bit and still have good control. I'm not sliding sideways. These Falcon shocks in the rear are adjustable. You can have them in the firm setting for towing, or you can flip the switch, make them softer, allow more articulation, all good. I'm not exactly a huge fan of the location of the four-wheel drive engagement system, and that's because it's on the left, and I'd rather it have a location where I can reach it with my right hand, but more importantly, where everything else is located. As it stands, you do have the auto switch, which kind of makes this act like an all-wheel drive vehicle where it'll react to a loss of traction and then, of course, four high and four low, and then your two-wheel drive mode. So the other components that are important for off-roading or just being on dirt in general, of course, for some people, hill descent control, which is right here, and traction control. I like the toggle switches. I wish the other switches were actually over here. Now, fortunately, General Motors did put their trailer brake control right here, which is in an optimum location. Interesting stage three pathway initiated by Andre. Kind of a roundabout way of doing it. See how this works. Kind of up and over. There we go. Easy peasy. That two inch lift is just right for this truck. Kind of a slick rock section and I'm gonna make I'm gonna take a little bit more of an extreme line 
through this because I do have a lift I have a little bit more clearance so I feel like I can actually take a little bit more of an aggressive line I still don't have a lot of breakover angle though I wish I had more visibility I don't have a front camera like Nathan I can't really see I cannot see Nice. Strikes a beast. There are a couple things about buying trucks right out of the factory that are a real plus. But there's a few things that I noted on the trail, and one of which is the rear end in this, I really wish I had the rear end in that. What do you mean? Just extra gearing? No, the ability to lock it with the okay. flip of a switch instead of letting it spin. Because as you noticed on the trail, with the loose sand, mm -hmm. there was a lot of spin before it locked. Yeah, and the Ram Rebel, I mean, was unstoppable. The better the truck is off-road, the less dramatic it looks. I mean, that's kind of the bottom line, isn't it? Right, mine was a little bit more dramatic, but I still maintain that this GMC is the best combination for on-road and off-road. Here's an important part. My truck, as equipped, the way it sits, is around $66,000. Yeah. What is your truck with all these goodies? 59, 59. Okay, okay, 59, and that's before the stuff, right? Yes. Okay, what about after the stuff? Well, it's pushing a little bit over $70,000. $70,000. Yes. It's a lot of money to pay for getting just a little bit more off-road capability. A little bit? This I truck is unstoppable. I just want to take it in the desert and jump dunes. And for more on the Ram Rebel Rouser series, of course, check out the TFL Truck channel right here. That's right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We had a great time out here, and it is really hot. I need my air-conditioned seats, baby. Yeah, this rock is not air-conditioned. <laughs> no, it's not. All right. See ya.